when I teach international politics, um, I use the Viking Review section, the ma magazine section, and obviously the, the first part of the New York Times that is the international uh, 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 news. And obviously the, the op-ed pages too, because you get varying perspectives there. One of our professors, our political science professors, asks students to uh, actually track uh, op-ed columnists that appear with regularity, some that are, are part of the time staff and others who are, are um, uh, contributors to the, to the op-ed page, and kind of follow those people and be able to represent their views in a discussion with students who are representing others' uh, views. The students began a unit on the Holocaust, and for them, you know, uh, it's something most of them didn't even know about that the Holocaust actually occurred in Europe and there was a piece about ancestors of, uh, you know, descendants of, of people who participated in the Holocaust but who didn't know that their own parents had participated uh, in the German SS. And so, you know, this is the article that the students are required to read for tomorrow. The perception of a liberal bias in the New York Times is, is nothing to uh, run away from. We try to address it head on. One of the things that I do in class is distribute articles for groups of students to read and I'll have them actually circle words or phrases that they believe indicate a liberal bias. And then when we actually talk about the substance of the article, I'll ask, by the way, did you see a liberal bias? And nine times out of ten, the answer is no. They became more interested in the substance of the, of the article. We have a professor in our business um, department that has regularly been using the um, business section, asking the students to bring a clipping every time to come to the class from the business section and applies what they're learning in the, in the class. In the intro to journalism class, there's a lot of how-to. In other words, look at the way the writer constructed their sentence. Look at the way they used things on second reference. Today, a student uh, chose an article about a dance troupe in Iraq that had one time uh, been able to generate income and, and a livelihood for dancing, but that with the, the new uh, administration and the strife uh, in, in Iraq, that the ability to perform had been greatly reduced. In fact, the troupe had performed only five, five times. So the student led a discussion about the relationship of the arts and, re and religion and, and politics. For tomorrow's reading of the Times, we're each choosing an article that has been specifically or particularly meaningful for us this week and writing a letter in response to it, whether a letter to the reporter or to someone in the article you know, a person mentioned, or the, the editor, or, you know, our senator, or the president, or God, or whoever you need to write a letter to. <laughs> doesn't have to be sent, necessarily, but it's the first step in thinking about how to respond. What do we do with what we know? One of our, uh, one of our theater professors, uh, I think, does a very creative thing with the New York Times. He takes classic performances of, of the plays that are you know, classic in American society and he compares the reviews of those performances with the reviews of performances in, t in today's uh, uh, culture. So they compare and contrast the way uh, newspaper uh, reporters and critics are actually covering uh, the, the various culture art, cultural arts. What we do is we find literate human beings who engage with day-to-day -day information. 